Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? Hope you are having a great day. Ready for some new drama from Ask a Lawyer? Let's go to the first one, about OP's father, who invited OP to go on holidays with his wife and OP's siblings and step-siblings. But, well, apparently OP's dad is paying for everyone except OP, and at the end, OP finds out the real reason why she was invited to come. Listen to the story to find out, and of course to hear my opinion on the matter. Enjoy the stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My, female 16, parents are divorced. My dad remarried eight years ago and has a six-year-old daughter and three-year-old son with Mia. We never got along. As I've grown up, things have changed, but she's always felt threatened by me. My dad has changed a lot since Mia and has turned his back on me more than ever. I have a chronic illness and I'm admitted often. Mia's made sure my dad doesn't visit me when I'm in the hospital weeks at a time. I gave up on him being super present and get he has his kids to worry about now. I have a mom who's beyond wonderful and while I still love him, I don't need him as much as I did growing up. Recently though, we've been okay. I visit here and there and love being around my siblings and step-siblings, male 15 and female 12. My dad planned a trip for them to go to the beach. My dad insisted I go and spend some quality time with them. I said fine since things have been better and got pretty excited. I get a text from my dad with the details of the flight for them. He said to book my ticket quick since the seats were filling up and to try to get a window seat since he knew I loved them. I have a part-time job and have saved money, but I refuse to pay. I texted back acting stupid, saying just pick any seat, I'm not picky. He said, no, I'm sorry sweetie, I wasn't clear, can you cover your plane ticket? I showed my mom and she was pissed and called him asking why he can't pay for me. He said I'm old enough to pay for it and he had enough to pay for since he was paying for everyone else. This man has money, so that's not the issue. Money I don't see, but he has a lot of it. They argued for a long time and he said since I'm more her daughter than his, she could pay for it. He has four kids and his dog of a wife he's paying for. His stepson has a job too, so I was confused why I had to pay, but he didn't. Prior to this, he told me to pack some extra cash for anything I'd want to eat or shop for. That I understand. After they talked, he called me and said it's not him being mean, he just has so much on his plate. The other night, me asked if I got a ticket yet, and I said no, I'm not going. She fakely asked why not, and I said I can't afford it, and made a comment about not being as lucky as others to have a sugar daddy to pay for my crap. She told me to watch myself, and be lucky I was even invited and get to stay with them in the Airbnb dad rented. Six bedroom house. She told me to not be an a-hole to my dad and just ask my mom to pay for it. She clearly didn't want me there, but quickly changed her tone and said my little siblings would love me there, and her and my dad could have some time to go out a couple nights, since I'm the most responsible, you'd be a big help. I called her a B and told her I wasn't going to be her free babysitter, but that was a good joke. She cried to my dad, now he's pissed, and told me just not come since I'm making crap more dramatic and complicated. In my opinion, OP should not buy the ticket and should not go even if they pay. How can a father be like that to his own daughter? OP is absolutely right for calling them out. OP's stepmother is evil and father is just a doormat who doesn't deserve the name of a father. Just wait until OP has to witness her step-siblings get given cars and college funds and then deposits on houses. This man is pathetic and I hope OP doesn't waste any more time on building a relationship with him. Let's hear if the community agrees with me. Throwaway51276 says, Not the a-hole. You called it absolutely right. They wanted a free babysitter and wanted you to pay for the privilege of doing it. Well done for standing up to them. Iarabesk85 says, Not the a-hole. They wanted you to pay for the privilege of being their babysitter. The way they are treating you breaks my heart. The she's more your daughter than mine comment is particularly shocking to me, especially if your father is paying for his stepson. I'm so glad you at least seem to have a responsible and loving mom by your side. B. Jackson says, Not the a-hole. You should go no contact with your father and your stepmother by extension. Write a letter to him and give a copy to your mother, explaining why, and then block him until you are an adult and financially independent. I'll admit that I don't like your father because he is very comfortable not taking responsibility of you emotionally and financially. You were an afterthought as if you were a friend, babysitter, joining a family trip, and not his child. He allowed his imagined money issues to get in the way of him getting the chance to build a better relationship with you. He might regret that in the future, but it's his loss. 
The reality is that your father is a weak man who wants to be a good father, but lacks the emotional and mental strength and maturity. Your stepmom is awful, but she's only as bad as your father allows her to be. I'd also ask your mother to not discuss your father with you, because she might have to talk to him, but she doesn't have to relay his thoughts or actions to you. My best friend, friend, I've known since I was in diapers. We were neighbors throughout high school, went to college together, and shared an apartment our last year there. He's been a brother our whole lives. We're both an only child. We've talked about how we'll be each other's best man for as long as I can remember. I don't really have any friends other than him. I'm not very social. Two years ago, I met the love of my life, fiance. One year into the relationship, friend meets fiance's best friend, maid of honor. Friend and maid of honor start dating. Fiance and I both agreed that this might cause complications in our relationship if they have problems, but also acknowledged that we couldn't really do anything about it. What were we gonna do, tell them they can't date? They were great together, and maid of honor found him worth giving up waiting until marriage. A few months ago, I proposed, and we are set to be married in a little over a month. I asked friend to be my best man. Fiance asked maid of honor to be her maid of honor. Two weeks ago, friend went out with some other friends and ended up drunk and going home with a girl. He confessed this to me the next day, and he felt like absolute crap. I told him he's got to confess it to maid of honor. He ducked up, and it's only fair to her, and she'll be a lot more understanding if he tells her himself. He agrees this is the right thing to do. Maid of honor's livid, rightfully so. I come home from work, and she's at my apartment. She packed a bag and asked fiancé if she could stay with us to get out of her apartment. I'm fine with this. I can understand she's going through a rough time. One week ago, Maid of Honor decided she can't handle dating anymore, and they break up. She's staying with us until she can find another apartment. Fiancé tells me that there's no way Maid of Honor will be able to handle being at the wedding, especially walking down the aisle with friend. I told her that they don't need to walk down together or do anything together, but I can't tell him he can't be my best man. It would devastate both of us, as well as leaving me without a best man. Fiancé tells me I shouldn't even want to be friends with him anymore, and offers her brother as my best man. She put her foot down on him even being at the wedding. She says that one of them can't be there, and that it's not fair for maid of honor to both get cheated on, and then also not be able to go to the wedding because we chose friend over her. Friend is already devastated that he ducked up his relationship. I hate cheaters, but you just don't turn on your lifelong best friend because he ducked up. I understand that this is very challenging for maid of honor, but I also feel like since this is my wedding, it should be determined by what me and fiancé want, and that I shouldn't go through my wedding without a best man because of maid of honor. I also don't think it should be a choice of one or the other, and that they should both come and be professional and avoid each other. Am I the a-hole for standing by having him as my best man? In my opinion, friend should withdraw from the wedding. He knew full well that his actions would affect OP's wedding day, and he didn't care. So, I think OP is in the wrong here for kind of not being sympathetic towards his fiance and her best friend, who had her heart broken by OP's crappy friend. Let's hear if the community agrees with me. The Owida Way 224 says, No a-holes, except your best man, but not the point. And Maid of Honor needs to put her crap aside for the day. This is a day about you and fiance. Do everything you can to separate them. Don't have them walk together. Don't have them sit near each other. Deleted says, no a-holes, except friend, but I do agree it would be unfair to uninvite him. Personally, I would keep the wedding as it is, with the exception of obvious stuff like them not walking the aisle together. If either of the two can't put their crap to one side for one day, that's on them. You and fiancé shouldn't have to pick one or the other or lose a friend over their relationship. Nyora Familiar Spirit says, You're the a-hole. Going against the grain, but yeah, your best friend screwed up big time and the maid of honor absolutely should not have to walk, dance, whatever with him. That being said, I think there's still room for him to attend the wedding, and possibly even be a groomsman. However, look at this from your fiancé's perspective. Your best friend is a cheating jerk, and you are basically defending him. She is very likely wondering if you are going to cheat. You and fiancé need to have a serious conversation about this, and see if you can come up with a compromise. Update. Supposed to marry months ago, but due to circumstances, unrelated to this situation, we've had to push it back until this past weekend. A few days after my post, Maid of Honor moved in with a friend who was looking for a roommate. Two weeks after she was out, I started having friend over to hang out. Fiancé knew that I was doing this, but I never usually tell her when exactly it is. 
Fiance came home from work early one day on my day off, while friend was there, having a few drinks with me. This was the first time Fiance had come face to face with friend since their confrontation after the incident. She saw his car and immediately went up to our room. I followed her up there to ask if it was okay that he was over, and while hesitant, she said it was okay. Asked if she wanted to come down and hang out with us, and she said she was tired and might come down in a bit. I go back, friend asks if he should leave. A bit later, fiancé comes down, grabs a drink, and sits with us. She joined the conversation quickly, although I can feel the awkwardness. After a few drinks, the topic of how Maid of Honor is doing comes up. Fiancé says she's doing fine. Fiancé tells friend that she knows he is a good guy, even if he ducked up. She admitted wishing that Maid of Honor would look past things to be able to just go on with the wedding ceremony as planned. Fiancé was getting annoyed at the situation and was somewhat hurt that Maid of Honor can't put her personal thoughts aside for her best friend's wedding day. T-1 week. Fiancé told Maid of Honor she has until three days before the wedding to decide, or she will select a new one. The time passes, and Fiancé chooses her cousin. The day before the wedding, Maid of Honor calls Fiancé in tears about how bad of a friend she feels like, and asks if it's too late to still be Maid of Honor. I had my opinions on this, but I recognized it wasn't my place, and Fiancé allowed her it. Wedding day came, and Maid of Honor called the morning of to tell Fiancé she couldn't go through with it. Fiancé was pretty devastated. Luckily, her cousin had gone through rehearsals as Maid of Honor and was happy to fill in. The wedding continued, and I had an uneasy feeling Maid of Honor was going to show up and make a scene, but thankfully she didn't. Her parents were there, close to Fiancé, but Maid of Honor wasn't mentioned. Wife is moving on past Maid of Honor and is done with her crap. I think we can both understand how difficult getting cheated on was, but she was given months to decide on whether to stay as maid of honor, and she bailed on the day of the wedding. I don't think friend is a crappy person, just made a crappy mistake, but I am glad that this didn't hurt my new marriage. Thanks for all of your advice, support, and criticism. I really think it all helped me grow as a person and view situations from the perspective of others. Edit. I think I didn't put enough effort into viewing this for maid of honor's point of view. I realized we didn't treat her the best, or how she deserved. I think we were just really focused on our own wedding, and while it was one of the most important days of our lives, we were selfish about it. And I hate to say that we may have sacrificed a friend because of it. I got married to my husband about a year ago. My husband has a sister who is pretty rich. Before we got married, she would help him a lot by giving him money each month, but she doesn't like me and stopped giving him money after we got married. However, she's doing something else now. I have a stepdaughter and a daughter who are both 14. My sister-in-law started giving my stepdaughter some jobs, like taking her dog out for a walk or helping her do the dishes. In exchange, she'll give her money. The money she gives her is way too much for the jobs that she does, and basically she's just using the jobs as an excuse to give her money. So the situation now is that while we are all struggling, my stepdaughter is living a very comfortable life. My daughter eats the school lunch every day, it's very cheap, but also tastes terrible. My stepdaughter, however, buys lunch from a restaurant near their school. I asked her to buy lunch for her stepsister sometimes because we can't afford it, but she refused and called her aunt who called me and said I'm an a-hole and to leave her niece alone. Little Mac 18 says, you're the a-hole. Your stepdaughter earned that money. You don't get to dictate how she spends it. It is your job to provide for your daughter, not another child. Little Helicopter 69 says, you're the a-hole. Your sister-in-law can hire your stepdaughter and pay her for these jobs however she chooses. It's her money. Your stepdaughter can also spend her money how she chooses and doesn't have to cater to your daughter's needs with her money. Just another stranger says, Would it be a nice gesture for her to do that? Yes. Do you have the right to demand it because she is more comfortable? Absolutely not. Do you want your kid to feel like a peer's charity? It's your responsibility to provide for your daughter and not your 14-year-old stepdaughters. Your sister-in-law does it correctly. She wants to give her money, but does it in a way that makes your stepdaughter feel like she earned it. Been with her for three years. We're both 22 right now and live together. I went on our laptop and she was still logged into her Facebook. She was talking to a friend of hers and she was telling her that she felt really guilty for something. I got curious and scrolled back a little bit and it turns out she had a one-night stand with some dude she met at a party. She claims that she was drunk and everything, and that she deeply regrets it and feels absolutely terrible about it. She tells her friend that she's been debating on telling me, and her friend just tells her that she should keep it a secret. 
She told her that she doesn't know what to do after that. This all happened last Friday, and the conversation took place today, yesterday. It all lines up with her behavior. She was being incredibly affectionate for no reason and was spoiling me the entire weekend. She was way more kinky during S too, and I was wondering what happened with her, but I wasn't complaining. My birthday is about a month from now, and she's buying me a pretty expensive gift I've been wanting for quite some time, and I decided to not confront her until after my birthday. I plan on breaking up with her afterwards. Meanwhile, I'm trying to keep my act together, but it's pretty hard. Is this an a-hole move? Drakaya says, Everyone sucks here. This is incredibly petty. I could see how people would think you're being a jerk, but she's the one who cheated on you. May as well leave with something you want. If it were me, I'd probably wait. Everyone sucks though. Too many tacos, oh no, says. You're not the a-hole. Get that present. Make it a good one. Cheater can eat garbage. Superfire444 says, Everyone sucks here. She sucks for cheating on you, which is obvious. You would suck for taking revenge like this. Sometimes the right thing to do is to walk away with your head held high and not stoop down to their level. You're, hopefully, better than this. Edit. I do wonder if she decides to confess. She told her friend she didn't know what to do today, so who knows. That's also partly the reason why I didn't break up straight away. Edit 2. Well, duck me. She just confessed everything. She wanted to tell me this morning, but I was in a very bad mood because I just read her message. I don't even know anymore. Cried like a little baby, even though I already knew. She's a wreck, but so am I. I'm just going to drive for a little bit.